hey, you clicked on a video and it's about voiceover, microphones, audio interfaces, XLR cables, things of that nature, and getting it into something like a Premiere. It's okay. It is okay, I think. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Totally. I'm gonna go clean this up before I ruin all of my gear. Everything is still working. Let's talk about getting nice crispy VO into Premiere Pro. For this example, I'm going to use the intro to the show that I host on my channel called Passion and Progress, where I interview inspiring individuals that are pursuing their passions and hopefully through hearing their stories, you too are motivated to pursue your passions as well. You should check it out sometime, it's pretty cool. One of my upcoming episodes is with Kelly G Fit, as you see here on the screen, and right here is where we are going to record my intro. Oh, and by the way, if you are into video editing and hearing stories from inspiring individuals, then Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Throw me a like at least. I spilled coffee over everything and now it's clean. When it comes to getting voice inside your computer, there's a couple things you need to take into account. Like for right now, I'm using this Shure SM7B going into the Zoom H6 and this is an audio interface. What does an audio interface mean? On a basic level, it's taking analog signal and digitizing it so a computer can turn it into ones and zeros, thus translating it into audio waveforms inside Premiere Pro. That's the most basic thing that I could try and explain that as. In my circumstance, I'm using an interface, but you may already have a USB microphone that could go into your computer and you could use that too. We have to make sure that your computer is recognizing your mic. You can do that through system preferences, sound, and right now I know that my H6 is connected because it says H6 right here under the input tab on sound. Next, inside Premiere Pro, what we will do is go to preferences, audio hardware. Here under default input, you may have something like built-in microphone, but what I want is my H6. Hopefully your USB microphone or audio infer interface is showing up here. So I'm gonna hit yes. Right now I do the built-in output because I have my headphones connected to them. I'm gonna slap those on right now and hit okay. In this example, I already have a sequence made with clips and everything in it. If you don't have a sequence made, you can do something like this. Click a new button, sequence, and choose the preset of whatever your heart desires. But for me, I already have my sequence right here. Now what we wanna do is right click in this space right here Go to Add Tracks, Track Type. Now for most voiceover, it's going to need to be mono because you're only recording one solo track. What's nice about doing this in mono is one, it doesn't take up as much space on your computer, and two, it doesn't take as much processing power on the back end if you're putting effects and other things like that on your tracks. So I'm gonna click mono, gonna hit okay, and notice that this little speaker is right here and it's telling me that it's mono. Right click go over to voiceover record settings. And instead of calling this audio five, I'm gonna call this Javier VO. It's always nice to label your tracks because when we start recording them, it's going to record it as Javier VO underscore one, Javier VO underscore two, so on and so forth. So you can have countdown sound cues, pre-roll of three seconds and post-roll of two seconds. I'm gonna keep the pre-roll on just to give that to you as an example. My source is the H6. Uh, you can change that right here, but I'm using that as my microphone. So hopefully your audio interface has popped up right there. Close. Next. It's pretty simple. All you got to do is hit this microphone button and then it's going to restart recording. So because there's pre-roll on this, I'm going to move my cursor right here. It's going to give me three seconds of pre-roll before it actually starts recording. I click this. Three, two, one. On the 31st episode of Passion in Progress. Okay, so right off the bat, there's one thing that I notice. Right when I started recording, I, I heard my voice in latency in my headphones and it's really weird to hear that one pro tip to alleviate that if all you're doing is voiceover mute the output but let's say you wanted to hear music while you were doing your voiceover i could go to audio audio track mixer and turn my track down of javier vo now hit the record button I hear the music and let's get it on episode 31 of passion in progress kelly g fit Then you just rock out. We have our voiceover in there. Let's make it sound nice and crispy. First thing I wanna do, audio track mixer. So go up here. What I'm gonna do is filter in and cue first. Then I'm gonna go to parametric equalizer. Double click it to bring it up. And we are going to go down to vocal enhancer. If you don't have that preset in there, I'm pretty sure you should. Uh, if you don't, it looks something like this. And what I do for my VO is I boost the bottom and then bring these highs even more in. Before and after, here's- On episode 31 of is. Passion in Progress. 
And here's with the parametric. On episode 31 of Passion in Progress. Sounds crispier, doesn't it? Let's make it even crispier. We're going to go to amplitude and compression. Go to multiband compressor. Double click on it to bring it up. For some reason, sometimes when I bring up my multiband compressor, mm -hmm. it doesn't automatically do broadcast, but make sure you click on it. Like click on another one and then click on broadcast again and then it will bring it up and actually have it work. So here's what it sounds on like On episode now. 31 of Passion in Progress, Kelly G. Fit. If it sounds too like compressed or cr like crunchy as opposed to crispy, just adjust this threshold and I'll do something like that if it's too On loud. episode 31 of Passion in Progress. What it sound before these two effects on episode 31 of passion in progress and then with the two effects on there on episode 31 of passion in progress not super flat right next thing i'm gonna do is to help with the room noise so if you're in a room like this there can be some echo and other things like that and what helps with that is using something like noise reduction so right here premiere pro just introduced denoise and I'm not as big of a fan of it. I don't I don't like it as much as what they used to have before. Don't use denoise all the way to 40%. What you want to do is just do a little bit. Depending on where you're at, 10%. On episode 31 of Passion in Progress, Kelly G Fit. On episode 31 of on ep So the reason why I do not like denoise is did you hear on that pop? On on it does that like premiere get rid of that. Uh, and I can even put a little fade in there. It's still on gonna pop. On like what? Stop that premiere. Like this is why I don't like denoise. So you can use denoise. You could use it, but I don't like it. I use something like an obsolete sound effect. So that means it's probably not gonna be there in further versions of Premiere. But I'm still gonna use it. Adaptive noise reduction. Same concept works here though, where I go to about five. On episode thirty-one of. Pa did you hear that? There's no on episode there. 31 of Passion in Progress. Kelly G Fit. Wow. What's the last thing that we can do to add to this crispy VO? We can add something called dynamics. Once you have the dynamics, double click that. And we're going to click this auto gate. What this is going to do is it's going to cut off the microphone when the audio gets below a certain volume level. And that volume level is set right here, this threshold. Right now it's at negative 20 dB, and I'll show you what it does right meow. On episode 31 of Passion in Progress, Kelly G. Fit. If you can hear, it's cutting out all of my breaths because that's below that negative 20 threshold. So if you want to hear the difference, here's with it off. Kelly G. Fit. Where, when it's on. Kelly G. Kelly G. F you hear the difference? I hear the difference. It makes it sound better. But for most circumstances, negative 20 is way too intense. On most VO or any other time you use an audio gate, it's probably going to be cutting out the audio too soon and at too much of a high level. So what we do is I'm going to draw this back just a little bit. And something like minus 40 is something safe. And the other thing that you can do is, so I'll show you this. On episode 31 of Passion in Progress, Kelly G. Fit. Whenever this is red, that's when you know there's no signal coming through. And I could still hear my breath there, so I'm going to go back to maybe negative 30. One of Passion in Progress, Kelly G. Fit. I like how that sounds. So let's go ahead and drop it in and see what everything sounds like all together now. On episode 31 of Passion in Progress, Kelly G. Fit. Uh, yeah. What's up? That's right. We got that VO in our career. Pro. 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 Hey, if you really like this, if you really like this tutorial and you're still watching and I hope you got value out of it, can you hit that subscribe button? If you are not subscribed already, give me a like. And if you just like coffee in general and spilling it all over your electronics before doing a tutorial, leave me a comment down below. If you don't like that, then still leave me a comment down below. Until next video, guys. Live a life of abundance. Love you.